Hey guys, what's up? It's Joe Rady from Rady's Rides. I'm back at my hometown filming spot location because guess what? We have that brand that still brings Zoom Zoom even though they may not advertise it anymore. It's this vehicle right here. This is a 2024 Mazda 3 Turbo plus it has all wheel drive. But before we get into this sport compact sedan, let's talk about what's going on here. Mazda, they really used to advertise Zoom Zoom all over the place. And to me, that made the most sense. Now, there is no longer a Mazda Speed 3. That used to be the Mazda 3 with that extra steroid injection of performance from the group at Mazda that handled all of their race car engineering. But you know what? Even though this may not be a true Mazda Speed 3, it still brings a turbocharged power pack punch and it has all wheel drive. Now, another brand which seems to also kind of moved away from its heritage, they're also Japanese, that would be Subaru and the Subaru WRX. Now, what I want to find out is if you're looking for a great everyday driver that has enough oomph but also has all-wheel drive and a turbocharger, is the Mazda 3 the better way to go when it comes to a Subaru WRX GT? The reason why I say GT is because that model only comes in an automatic transmission setup. So let's go ahead, let's dive into this poly metallic gray color, one of my favorite colors of Mazda's, and find out. Right off the bat, the overall dimensions. I like the way the Mazda 3 sedan is a little bit smaller than the WRX. The WRX has gotten bigger over the years. The Mazda 3 has stayed very consistent. When it comes to styling, very sleek, no hard edges. Full LED headlights, LED daytime running lamps, and you have adaptive headlights that move with the steering. Great to have that illumination when you're driving down your favorite twisty road at night. You do have a little bit of bright, shiny chrome, and this is where I think that with the turbo all-wheel drive, this should be dark chrome finish. Let me know in the comment section, do you think this is too fuddy-duddy, or are you liking it? Let me know down in that section. Following our finger down to the bottom portion of this vehicle, you'll notice that we have just a little bit of chrome accent, I wish that they would have done something a little bit more creative. Give me some fog lamps. If you look at the WRX, the WRX still has those rally-inspired fog lamps. Would have been nice to have some fog lamps down there or some functional venting. As we come across that low-slung nose, you got the iconic Mazda badge, a gloss black grill that's fully functional, and you'll notice how the chrome trim goes from one end of the front to the other side. The lower portion does have this lip extension and you are gonna have functionality on the bottom portion because remember, behind all this is a intercooler for that turbocharger. Now, as you rise up, you got that low slung nose. Whereas with the Subaru WRX, the WRX nose, the front end comes up higher. No hood scoop or anything like that, just slick body lines that just coast into the side of the vehicle. Now, as we come around the bend, here's where the Mazda 3 falls a little short, especially to the Subaru WRX. It's gonna come in wheel and tire setup. So what you're basically looking at is this black multi-spoke wheel. It's an 18 inch wheel. That's not the problem. The problem is, is the width of the tire is only 215s with a 45 series sidewall. I would like to see a 235 at least with these with these uh, wheels. But let me know what you think about the style of the wheel compared to the WRX. WRX has a little bit more rubber to meet the road. I love the way everything is painted. And for some reason, somebody at Subaru thought it was, in their infinite wisdom, the best idea to put body cladding, flat black body cladding, on the fender openings of the WRX. That's a big no-no. I love, it's all painted, and it's a really great color. The other great color that Mazda has is Soul Red. Now coming down the side, 
On the all-wheel drive turbo, you have this metallic painted mirror cap, black mirror cap. Turn signals, really small, really slim. And then flat black on the trim. Up top, you have a standard size sunroof, which on the GT, the WRX GT, that is a way to get a sunroof. Some bright, shiny metal work along the top. That's another area. If it was flat black or even black chrome, it would have looked a lot better. I do like the way they have that side skirt extension that extends out as you come towards the rear of the car. This is front wheel drive base. It will send power to the rear wheels to give us all wheel drive. And then swinging around back, a nice tasteful black metallic paint. It's not gloss black. It's a metallic black sparkly trunklet spoiler. And just like the headlights, boy oh boy, that's an area where it whoops up on the WRX how good those taillights and headlights look. Across the back, you got your Mazda badge. That's where they're gonna hide the button to open up the trunk. And then of course you have Mazda 3 all-wheel drive. And then of course, there it is, T-U-R-B-O, turbo, working our way down. Instead of a quad tip exhaust like you get on the WRX, we have a single outlet on each side, stainless steel, aluminum tip, nice slash cut, and everything is painted on the lower bumper area. But why don't we go ahead, let's pop the hood and talk shop about this Mazda 3 Turbo. All right guys, we got the hood popped. Underneath the hood, simple but straightforward engine cover with the turbo script there. What is it? It's a 2.5 liter inline four turbocharged engine. It does have a prop rod. I am gonna have to zonk that because uh, the WRX actually has hood struts. But what do we actually have power wise? So out of that turbocharged power plant, you're looking at 256 horsepower, 320 pound-feet of torque. It's mated to a torque converter traditional six-speed automatic transmission, whereas the WRX GT uses a CVT transmission. So zero to 60 in this vehicle right at 5.4 seconds. Top speed is governed to 134 miles per hour. And then the vehicle weighs 3,392 pounds. MPGs, 23 in the city, 32 on the highway. Now, if you're comparing this to the Subaru WRX GT, even though it has a CVT, it does have more power out of the 2.4 liter turbocharged engine. But why don't we go ahead, let's fire this up and see it move. All right, guys, we are inside this 2024 Mazda 3 Turbo all-wheel drive. I know you're seeing yourself with Joe. I'm glad you're reviewing this vehicle because I'm this close to buying a Subaru WRX, but I'm still not 100% sure that it is the right car for me. I'm curious, how much is this Mazda 3 Turbo all-wheel drive? Well, here are the numbers. MSRP for the way that this one is optioned is $36,000. Now, before you jump out of your seat and have a heart attack, the Subaru WRX GT is over $40,000. But let's see what you get when you go Mazda to the door panels. What you're gonna find is a higher level of materials, fit, and finish. I love the stitching, soft touch material. You got the Bose sound system with the aluminum speaker grill covers. There is some gloss black around the switch gear, which I am gonna have to zonk because that's gonna be littered with fingerprints but I love the leather style on the armrest, more stitching, and then the door pocket is a good enough size for three chalupas and some of those cinnamon twists from Taco Bell. Now going from the door panel to the dash, more great material, soft touch, the brown stitching. You slide on in, what do you have? A 10.25 floating iPad style infotainment system, I think, the one thing you're probably not going to like is that you could touch it, but it's not a touch screen. You got to use the direct drive control knob, but what you're going to fall in love with is the backup cameras. 
super clear resolution. You got trajectory and 360 degree camera action going on there. And then we're right back where we started, working our way down. You do have your dual climate control, nice click to all the switch gear, heated steering wheel, three stages of heated seats, no ventilated seats, but the WRX GT doesn't have ventilated seats either. There's your stop start button, easy to get to, wireless charging, two cup holders, and there's your Mazda key fob, buttons on the side. The one thing I don't like about the cup holders is you can't get a big bottle in here. Standard size water bottle. Here's standard size Kirkland water bottle. There you go. Go any taller, game over. Game over. Six-speed automatic transmission, whereas the WRX GT has a CVT. You have your sport button. You just slide it, sport, off, sport off. That's it. Direct drive control knob for the infotainment system, real volume knob, some gloss black, but this I'm not worried about because you'd have to be a weirdo to be touching it because there's really no reason to touch it. Nice soft on the armrest. You can slide it back to get easy access. Two USB-Cs, pick it up. You got enough room in here. I would say four bags of Big League Chew and a nice package of now and laters. The nice thing about now and later is you could have it now or you could have it later. Duh. The seats, the leather style material, the stitching, perforation, decent bolstering, the Zonkas, manual adjustments for the passenger. 36 grand, I need some power over there. I have power on my side and I wish, just like the shiny chrome, I wanted that to be blacked out. It would be nice to have a darker headliner. This kind of reminds me of boring, just boring this. And then open up the sunroof shade. You got your standard size sunroof, which guess what? Even Stevens, because, uh, and hi Steven, Steven's not filming with us today. I got the, uh, the better videographer. You know who that is, LG Rady. Anyways, standard size sunroof, but the WRX has a standard size sunroof as well. But why don't you come over here to the business end? I got this beautiful thin spoke steering wheel I want to show you. Come on over. Hi guys, business time behind the wheel. It's sad, there's no aluminum sill plate that maybe says Mazda or something like that. You do get an aluminum sill plate on the WRX. Pedal box is set up nicely. I just want my aluminum brake pedal and my aluminum throttle pedal and of course, aluminum dead pedal. Where is the aluminum? So that is the Zonk, but you do have Mazda 3 embroidery on the floor mats. That's worth an extra three horsepower. You got your power seat controls and you have two memory seat settings. Now, the room in here up front is very nice, but the problem that I'm having is I'm reverting back to no aluminum sill plate and no aluminum pedals. It's starting to make me mad to where I, I just, this aluminum cam, we could have used the aluminum for the pedals. But anyways, steering wheel. Nice thin spoke, especially on the controls, all flat black. You do have paddles that are on the back of the steering wheel to go up and down that six speed automatic. And I like the easy access for your uh, 360 camera. And then there's your memory seat settings. It is a manual tilting and telescoping steering wheel. And then the dash is very straightforward. Nice digital speedometer in the center that allow you to go through different information. Then you have an analog tack, analog coolant gauge, and analog fuel gauge. So that really is nicely, cleanly set up and a HUD head up display. But why don't we go ahead, let's go recycle some cans because I want to get some aluminum pedals in here, but also check out the back seat of this Mazda 3. All right guys, back seat time. And here's the challenge, right? You can't have your cake and eat it too. That, that saying is, it's wrong. You can't do it because the cleaner exterior shape of this Mazda 3 Turbo compared to the WRX means that on the inside we have less passenger volume. So this back seat is definitely tighter than a WRX back seat. But let's move on from there. I do like the leather style material, the way they carve out the back, they try to give you as much leg room as possible. No pocket behind the driver. This is the worst. This is what breaks my heart right here. 
no USB, no 12 volt, nothing. Not even two cans and a piece of string so you could freaking make a phone call. Nothing back here. So that's a major zonk. I have my own pocket, thank God, because that's where I'm going to keep about five different cell phones because if one dies, I could then use the other one because I'm not charging it back here. Your phone dies, no more phone calls. Nobody will even know that you exist. God forbid, right? Armrest, Charmin Soft, so I like that. Two cup holders and the same great leather material as up front. But why don't we go ahead, let's get into that trunk because I wanna go for a spin in this Mazda 3. All right guys, before I let you in the trunk, one thing to remember is the Mazda 3 turbo all-wheel drive is available as a sedan, but also available as a hatchback. For the WRX, that no longer is the case. Now, it was available from 2008 to 2014, sedan or hatchback, but not anymore. But let me show you how much room, if you wanna go sedan, if you don't like the look of hatchbacks, let me show you how much room we have in this Mazda 3. So you hit the button, lift it up, you're gonna be greeted to almost 14 cubic feet of space. I like how low the cargo floor is. You do have that 60-40 split to fold down the rear seats, and you could do that easily with these handles at the back end. And then the other good piece of the news is that guess what? We do have a spare underneath. So nice to have that because a lot of brands are getting rid of spares. It's kind of crazy. But if you're ready, I'm ready. Let's go on throttle and see how this Mazda 3 Turbo drives down the road. Let's get to it. All right, guys, we're inside this Mazda 3 Turbo sedan with all-wheel drive. Nobody's behind us. I'm gonna slow down. We're gonna do a roll on throttle. I do have it in manual shift mode with the paddles and obviously we're in sport mode, but if you're ready, I'm ready. On throttle, here we go. Gets the power to the ground very effectively. Very smooth and, you know, I, I know a lot of people are hoping for more gears with this automatic transmission, but the six speed does work really, really well. And it shifts smoothly, which is important. Now, when you're behind the wheel, I think the biggest thing you're gonna notice between this Mazda 3 Turbo and a WRX GT is definitely the interior appointments. It feels more luxurious in here and it's more comfortable. Where it falls short is the seats. Now the seats, like I said, they're comfy. They just don't have the lateral support that the WRX has. And that's where you're gonna see the differences, especially because this is technically not a Mazda Speed 3. So you're not gonna have that extra bolstering for the seats. You know, there's no limited slip diffs. That's another thing um, that would make this a little bit more performance oriented. But that doesn't mean that it's lacking for power. I do like the way the turbocharged 2.5 liter inline four develops power. And I do like the driving dynamics. I mean, that's something that Mazda still brings to the table, even though they got rid of the five point multi-link rear suspension and we're left with a torsion beam rear, rear suspension, it's still a fun car to drive. And I think that's uh, another big point is that it's just a fun car to drive. Now the WRX GT has all those goodies underneath the sheet metal. So that's where you're gonna find that more performance orientation with how the vehicle is set up. But it's one of those compromises, right? What's more important to you? What you're experiencing on the interior or what you're experiencing in actual performance numbers? That's something that you have to figure out. All right, guys, we're gonna accelerate from a dead stop here. Nobody behind us. If you're ready, I'm ready. First gear, on throttle, here we go. Nice. On the brakes, downshifts are smooth. And then of course the steering actually has really good feedback to it. But when you get into the twisty bits, 
it, like I said, it's a fun car to drive and it's very competent. I just wish that it had a little bit more tire. The 215s are just a little too narrow. But the overall size of the vehicle I do like, it's just, it's, it's a case of close, but not close enough. It's like they brought the turbocharged power, they brought the all wheel drive, but it needed to be a little bit more. But that's not necessarily an easy decision to make and say, oh, just go with the WRX. You know, there's other things you need to take into consideration. And like I said, that daily driver ability. And I think that's where this car really comes into play. It's an awesome daily driver. From comfort, from pep, from just all the appointments. I wish the gear indicator was a little bit larger when you're using the paddles to manually shift. But why don't we go on throttle again? On throttle, here we go. You do want to shift before the red line. There's no need to run this out because she does run out of steam a little bit as you get closer to that 6,500 RPM red line. But steering has a nice direct feel. There is pumped in sound, but the good news is it's nothing true or too atrocious or too fake but it does just give a little bit more emphasis to the, the overall driving experience. But it's really where it handles where you're gonna find that enjoyment. But once you start to push the limits, that's where that torsion beam rear suspension is gonna show its limitations. But being able to navigate around local streets you got great visibility out the front out the back you got all the safety features and the fact that you have a nice head-up display which also displays things like your blind spot monitoring and your lane keep assist and like i said storage wireless charging a lot of these nice touches and a bose sound system does it suck that it doesn't have a touch screen like the Subaru WRX, that's really up to you. I like using the direct drive control knob. I think it's simple, no fingerprints, and I prefer the all real controls. But here we go, on oh, throttle. I'm telling you, it gets the grip down very nicely. On the brakes. But yeah, it's just, it's just under tired. It, it needs more tire and we need to get that multi-link rear suspension back but the zoom zoom is definitely there because you get up to speed very effectively and it's just it's just so smooth that's that's the bottom line just like the aesthetics of the exterior the design is smooth so is the driving experience but i'm gonna have to say if you want the performance if you want the p word you're gonna to have to go for the WRX GT, even though there's some things that I would like to majorly change about that car. And of course, it's got the higher price. But uh, I hope that this has been a good overall review of what this Mazda 3 turbo all-wheel drive sedan is all about. We're gonna get back to where it started and wrap this one up. So I'll see you in a Mazda minute. All right, guys, been another fun-filled day. Can't say no to some turbocharged power and some all-wheel drive traction, but we definitely got to thank the whole team at Mazda USA for getting us access to this Mazda 3 turbo all-wheel drive sedan. Is it the one to buy over a Subaru WRX GT? Let me know how you feel about it down in the comment section and which way you would spend your hard-earned money. But of course, if you're new to the channel and you're on your way out, hit that subscribe button. I promise you it's worthwhile. Come back for more. If you are a subscriber, thank you for being part of the Radies Rides family. We need to give it up to Lori. She is in it to win it no matter what car we're filming. So show her some love in the comment section. Thank you, Lori, for your dedication and hard work. And just like always, guys, I'll see you on the next ride.